Have you ever wondered if technology is reaching a plateau? Have you ever wondered if Moore's law is going to continue to hold true? Moore's law is defined as a process, uh, is defined as when the number of transistors on a chip are going to double in every two years. For, for me, Moore's law means technology ev evolves every two years. I have wondered, and as a marketer, I want to understand how do you keep pace of technology? How do you see how technology evolves? Cool. What do marketers do? Marketers want to sell their products, ensure brand awareness, with three key objectives in mind. One, reaching out to the customers, recalling brand, and ensuring brand awareness in moments that matter. And three, driving sales and growing your business. Teaching audiences is not new. This has been there for quite some time. If you look at this, we started out way back, a few decades back, in with sales flyers, newspapers, bulletins coming in, followed by radio and television. Newspapers, I remember weekend newspapers being twice as big and twice as expensive, primarily because they had insets of flyers from your local grocery store, from your supermarket, and from any seasonal events that might come about. And you would use them, clip coupons of them. People used to clip coupons from them and use them to actually go and trade in for discounts that might come about. Later on, when TV and, uh, when TV and radio came about, people started using them for making sure that you identify you as marketer, identify your target group, and then take it to the TV show, try to identify which TV shows are there which are relevant to your target groups, and then make sure you're marketing around those things. That was an initial version of how do you reach. And then the coupons was an initial version of how do you build, uh, how, how do you drive your conversions, and how do you make sure that you are attributing your, your, your sales or your advertising budgets. Looking forward, the internet came. And then this was a tectonic change. I remember as a graduate student in Texas A&M, I had my own corner of the web. I had my own website. This was a fad. Pretty much everybody had their own websites. But what you had in those was primarily information about yourself, about your team's research, about what you were interested in, your friends' websites, about what people were interested in in terms of what I liked, and also my blog and my pictures. This was all that I needed. For me, all of information that was relevant on the internet was fit on a page which was 20 links long. How about today? That has changed. That has evolved so much so that internet is transforming how we look at information. Imagine what do you do today on a daily basis? News, social media, pictures, videos, engaging with information, research, everything. Something that you like on the web, be it a movie time, be it price of a, of a product, be it some information that you like, a hidden word, all of these, you're reflexively going to the web and trying to get that information. And that's the, that's the change that has come about. We as consumers, we want information right, and we want it right now. And that is a change that has been happening so in the last couple of decades. The number of people, recent research suggests the number of people who are spending time on the internet is roughly around 40 hours a week. That's huge. And in addition to that, they're traversing around a billion pages across the world. People have stopped going online and have started living online. What used to be amazing has now become commonplace. Let me tell you a story. When I started working early days of my career, I was, uh, I was in financial services. I was doing software development. That was a great gig for me, I thought. Um, I had my own desktop, which was a PC. And then I had my own Unix station, because I had, that's where I used to code. And then I used to write software. And then I had something called a pager, which is a device which most of you guys might not even know about, given your ages. But that was a device you'd hang on onto your belt and then carry around if there was information that was needed about you. I felt good. I was recognized, I was given some power, I was doing some good work. And then I spoke to some of my, like a couple of weeks or months into the job, I, sp I spoke to some of my senior directors and some of my program managers. They did not have a desktop. 
They had a laptop. They did not have a pager. They had a cell phone. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Later, a few years down, I got my own laptop. I felt I had arrived. Guess what? Few weeks late, a few weeks in, a few weeks before I came to this talk, my daughter reaches out to me and says, Daddy, I can't deal with my brother and me sharing a laptop. Can you get me one for myself? That's the evolution of technology that has been seeing about. And that's where what, we, what was amazing is now getting expected. I talked about the internet, but imagine some of the other changes that have happened over the past two, three decades. GPS, MRI scanning, digital photography, technology shifts, ATM. These have become so much so, like you can't imagine the world we are living in without these things, and all of these were there for the last 20 odd years. They, didn't, they wasn't there before. My biggest fun moment is this. Wi-Fi on planes. I'll travel for work quite a bit, and I love traveling. For me, before Wi-Fi came on planes, a flight journey was an opportunity to think through, relax, try to introspect, and spend time with myself, and do work that I really wanted to do. But now with Wi-Fi, that does not seem possible. And as recently as two, three months back, I was trying to book a flight, and I realized that I was choosing a flight based on whether they had Wi-Fi or not. That kind of was concerning for me because the person that I was, who was introspecting and reflecting, I would talk about it proudly. Now I'm looking for flights which have Wi-Fi on them. Talk about evolving times, talk about double standards, talk about changing things. While all of this is true, there's some things which have changed or which have not changed. From a, marketing's perspective, from a marketer's perspective, these are three things which still stand true. How do I find the right customers? How do I stand out in the marketplace? And how do I measure the results? And how do I measure the return on investment? Those things are still true. But how we, as marketers, need to approach them has changed quite a bit. What I see is people need to worry about, people need to look about omni-channel. People need to measure performance. Return on ad spend is something that's very, very relevant now as we think about it. People are more concerned about engagement. How do I look at your property or the website or your, your, your storefront, digital or whatever? And then how am I engaging with them? These are significant trends that have evolved over the last 10, 15 years. Social media has become so much important. We talk about media, we talk about three bits, three ways that we think about it. One is paid media, one is owned media, and one is earned media. Own media is media that you own, your own properties, digital or whatever. Paid is what you advertise for and you get. And earned is what is the social media bit, wherein you try to know what's, what others are telling about you. And these are important, significant signals which people look at and then try to understand how we're trying to go. So as you think about it, while marketing has not changed a lot, the, with technology innovation, few things have changed. Purpose, value, participation, and being always on has become more and more important. While marketers have done great in terms of trying to keep up with technology, there is a lot more that's happening. Few things that I call about as imperatives or important things for, you, for everybody to be aware of. Internet of Things. This is coming about in a big way. What I, every appliance, every device at home is being connected. Think about your thermostats, your radios, your refrigerators, your televisions, your, your cars. All of these are now connected online. What does that do to you? Primarily, it helps you integrate with everything. You, you as, you're able to look at information and then figure out whether you're starting a journey on one, one device and then continuing to a different device. And then you're able to look at how does customer behavior change? How are people looking at these devices in different ways? Intel predicts that in the next two, three years, there will be 200 odd connected devices in the world. What does that mean? That's roughly around 26 devices, connected devices per person. Staggering. 
this is the first imperative that we as marketers need to worry about as we think of technology. Not worry about, be aware of. While IoT and devices are fun, people, geeks, if you will, would create them, folks in Silicon Valley or Bangalore are creating those devices, are people actually using them? This is an interesting trend chart that I found. Primarily talks about adoption curves of people using technology over the past 100 odd years. The last line on, on, my, on your left is what telephone and electricity are. And they took a good part of around 70, 80 odd years to get to anywhere close to 80, 90% adoption. And the rightmost line there is the internet. And it's literally a vertical line. Basically says the rate of adoption that consumers are doing is very, very fast and much higher. Put it in layman's terms, radio took 38 years to get to 50 million users. Facebook and social media, any guesses? Less than a year to get to 50 million users. So people are adopting to technology much faster than you would assume. And what does this do? This set of connected devices, as well as adoption, leads to an explosion of data. Big data driving big impact. As you can see, quite a few businesses, quite a few businesses are looking at big data to help them drive economic value. Basically driven by three things. One, the real-time nature of data that you get. Basically, you are able to get data on a much, real, much quicker basis, not necessarily months, but days and hours. The scale at which you get data, when you did market research or when we did market research, it took us close to surveys, and then you would get a data sample set of around 20 or 30, and then you extrapolate it out. Now that problem doesn't exist. You're doing the other way around. You have a data sample set, and you're thin slicing till you get to information that you want to look at. And the third bit is intent. You're able to quickly predict what is the user doing very much based on these big data. And using that, using this aggregated view of real-time data with intent, with scale that you have, you have a rich view of what is the customer's journey going to look like. And you're able to customize nuance and then change this. This is the third imperative that's going to come about pretty soon. The last one from my perspective. Machine learning, artificial intelligence. We are at an inflection point. Things are changing so fast that we are not even sure as to how we're going to change. We talk about a mobile world, which is what we live in today. Pretty soon, we're going to move to an AI-first world. What does that mean? All the data, all the signals that you have, it's going to be really hard for any marketer to think of coming up with a digital strategy with this kind of data set that you have. You need machines to actually understand machines and come up with strategies. Thousands of signals, multiples of, uh, multiples of sources of data, you're trying to crunch them and then say, OK, what is the right insight that I want? And that's not necessarily possible with just us thinking about it. From a, uh, from a human perspective, we need machines to help us. On the programmatic side, where I work, we actually look at using not just first party data, but third party data, and then thin slicing it, and then trying to come up with the right audience segment, which is going to help us reach whom we are trying to reach. In addition to it, while that's happening, mobile, we're not done yet. We talk about moments that matter, which is trying to understand the customer's life journey in a mobile, in, mobile environment. And then you're trying to look at where is it, what is he doing, and then trying to understand how can we help him in that journey. And that's far from being done. The transformation is on, but still a big journey. The third one is the immersive ecosystem. As you guys are aware, as we think of these network connected devices, we are going to get into a networked home. In that, pretty much ambient technology is going to rule us. You are no longer going to talk about, with voice recognition getting better, you're not necessarily going to talk about, how do I interface with device X versus device Y? They start speaking to each other. And then you are, you're just trying to understand how, what is the interplay of some of these devices. Give you an example. Let's assume you get into your car. Your car is going to read your data from your, from your cell phone about your calendar and know where you want to go and start using the GPS on the, phone, on, the, on the car 
to actually program to go where it's going to go. And if it were a self-driving car or an autonomous car, it's pretty much going to go by itself. That's the power of in, uh, immersive technology that I'm talking about. Very interesting, pretty uh, interesting times for us as marketers. The other one on the same lines, if you give an example, is let's assume you are listening to some podcast, video, music, whatever. As you walk into your house, it's just going to switch from your smartphone device to some, some other connected device in the house and start playing it from either from your stereo system or from your, any of your boxes. This number about queries, this is pretty real. Our voice technologies have, getting, have gotten so much better that people are using uh, voice to search as opposed to typing in. Imagine from an I.O. perspective, we only had keyboards for the longest time to actually interface. Even Blackberries or Bluetooth, whatever it was, is still, still typing in. But now once you start speaking or once you start looking at various other signals to enter and uh, do an I.O. better, the immersive nature of technology gets so much more better. To make it real, let me give you a few examples. Shopping journey, when you talk about marketing, one of the biggest things that you do is look at the customer lifecycle journey and try to understand what is he doing differently, where, where does he engage, how does he engage, and what do you help him, where do you help him. The recent auto shopper journey suggested that 900 touch points potentially for the marketer to engage with an auto shopper. Huge and of which 70 odd percent are from mobile device. This was much different than when I bought my first car, but that is, this is reality. In conclusion, increase in connected devices, my first imperative, followed by adoption of users, the customer adoption which is going so big, and then these both churning out data in, in, in terabytes and huge amounts of data, combined with machine learning, we are going to harness this technology to actually make significant progress over the next couple of years. And we as marketers, we need to evolve. Every 10, 15 years, there is a paradigm shift. This paradigm shift, in my mind, is the Moore's Law. In the 90s, early 90s, we had PCs, and that changed how people worked. People did not use paper and pen anymore. They started using uh, the computers and then started writing emails and then used Word documents and all of that. Then later came the web, which we talked about briefly, and then smartphones, which completely changed the customer decision journey, customer lifecycle journey, and it became always on and pervasive. Going forward over the next 15, 20 years, I see us getting from a getting more into the AI kind of a world, mobile first world, from a mobile first world to an AI first world. And we as marketers, we need to be nimble. Thank you very much.